I chose Brown because uh, I wanted to go to a school that had the sports I was interested in, had a reputation for treating African-American students well, and had a good reputation for getting people in medical school. And, uh, and I think that was uh, not available everywhere by any means. And again, I believe that was on the, on the vanguard of progress. In our class at Brown, uh, there were four or five African-American students. And uh, that was about what the number was in each of the four classes at that time. During my freshman year at Brown, doing fraternity rush uh, time, uh, I was uh, amazed to find myself, quote unquote, being rushed by a fr actually a, a two fraternities on campus. And uh, so I, I was invited to join Des Delta Youth Salon fraternity. It was something I wanted to do, but I also thought that it was something that I should do because at this point, the solution to uh, race was integration. And that was, that was the answer. I was invited into the fraternity, and uh, the national convention following the year that I was invited, uh, the Brown chapter was censured for having committed an unfraternal act, quote unquote, of, of bringing me into the fraternity. And as I went up through the, the years, I ended up being elected president of the, of the fraternity of the Brown chapter. And it, uh, as president, uh, I was uh, to go to the national convention which was held that year in uh, Middlebury, Vermont. And uh, I got, uh, you know, a couple of phone calls saying, well, you know, are you sure you want to go? You know, it might be a little trouble. You know, are you sure you want to come to this fraternity meeting? And uh, he said, maybe you should uh, unelect your, you know, maybe you should withdraw. I said, well, I can't withdraw. I said, I, 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 didn't, I didn't elect myself. I was elected, and so the people who elected me would have to withdraw, but I, I can't do that myself. So, I, you know, I plan to come. And it turned out then that they then began to say, well, you know, we, we're, we're concerned, you know, it, may, it might be some trouble, you know. We're, and I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, a few of my fraternity brothers are coming with me. And of course, that, that escalated the, the anxiety and, and the worry about it, but that's true. They were, they were gonna, other people were gonna come. And uh, so, one day I got a telegram saying uh, the convention had been canceled. The fraternity really, at some point, says this is not who we are. Contemporarily now, uh, a fellow by the name of Franklin uh, is the national president of Delta Upsilon. has been for maybe 10 years. He's African American. And then they invited me back and they gave me the highest honor they give to people in the fraternity, which is very nice. Uh, and so that worked out very well. An experience that I had at Brown that I will share, which is an example of Brown giving a good education. And it relates to uh, Professor Anthony Davids, psychology professor. And I was in his class as a sophomore student, and uh, uh, I was walking out of class one day, and he said, uh, come over here, uh, uh, Mr. White, I'd like to talk to you. And uh, he said, uh, he said, you're a good student. Uh, he said, have you, have you thought about doing an honors thesis? I have to admit, I'm not proud, but I didn't even know the honors program, what it was even at that time. And he said, uh, he said, why don't you come and talk to me, make an appointment, why don't you come and talk to me. He reached out to me, and that was very significant. I was able to graduate with high honors and uh, cum laude as a result of him just pulling me over. And, and I might not have done a, a lot of things if, if he hadn't, hadn't helped me. I had the, the great opportunity and privilege to, to uh, chair a committee called the Visiting Committee in, in 1986. And this was after, some time after, there had been a student protest, African-American students. And so after the meeting, I said to President Howard Swearer, I said, what do you think of the idea of while things are calm, when we're not negotiating a protest or a city or anything like that, inviting some people from outside the university, from around the country, whom we could assume or hope would have some, some wisdom and some ability to advise Brown to how it could be most proactive, you know, a plan and most constructive going forward around issues of race. And uh, President Suarez said, that seemed like a good idea, which I thought took a lot of courage, particularly at that time.
I, I tell my friends sometimes I feel like I got at least a master's degree in diversity based on my attendance uh, as a trustee at Brown and also uh, being able to work on the two visiting committees that came to Brown in 86 and in 99. And actually, we like to think those of us who served on those two visiting committees, particularly the second one in 1999, I feel that uh, the, the report of that committee reflected the forward-looking views of Brown uh, was something that uh, led in a natural kind of way to looking seriously at a candidate such as uh, Ruth Simmons. President Ruth Simmons was a first uh, African-American president and first female African-American president in the Ivy League. And it was very natural. I mean, it was, it, was, it was natural and I believe comfortable for her and it was natural and comfortable uh, for Brown and for his leadership. Brown students tend to engage themselves, uh, well, they tend to have a lot of options, a lot of interests, and they do tend to engage themselves in things that are a little bit on the cutting edge from time to time, and they seem to be comfortable and enthusiastic about it and, and not necessarily even uh, aware that they may be in, in, in the zone that they're, that they're in. Many of them end up doing things that involve issues of social justice, uh, issues of uh, uh, unselfish types of uh, careers. So I, I think that is something that, uh, that I've uh, enjoyed observing over the years.